The Bugatti Chiron Supersport broke the 300 mile an hour barrier, and that is startling considering it doesn't seem too long ago that we were celebrating the Veyron breaking 250. I remember that 253 miles an hour completely blew my mind as a kid, and the car famously used a thousand horsepower to get there. But back in the 1950s, a car from a fairly unassuming brand achieved a higher speed than that, but using a quarter of the power. Let me introduce this funny looking thing. This is the MG EX181 and let me cut to the chase. This thing back in 1959 achieved 254 miles an hour using just 300 brake horsepower. It's a remarkable feat of speed and efficiency and it still holds the record for the fastest speed recorded for its engine size. So how did this plucky little MG manage it? Well, as you can probably guess just by looking at it, its shape is perfectly optimised for high speed straight line performance, with that streamlined shape lacking any disturbances apart from an intake for the carburetor, the radiator and four exhausts. It gained the name the Roaring Raindrop and this incredibly streamlined shape can be quantified using a number called the drag coefficient. The drag coefficient number is used to quantify the drag or resistance of an object through a fluid, in this case air. The lower the drag coefficient number, the lower the resistance. It's hard to figure out exactly what the drag coefficient number was for the EX181, but some sources on the internet seem to say it comes out as 0.12. That is a remarkable number considering we celebrate most road cars that get down towards 0.25. And once you take a look at the equation for the drag force on the car, you get to see just how important that drag coefficient number is. Once you multiply it against the velocity squared and the cross-sectional area of the vehicle, it can influence that number pretty heavily and either help or hinder just how much drag force the car is creating. Something clever that MG designed into the car to form that amazing teardrop shape was that they made the rear track narrower than the front, meaning that the car's body could taper towards the rear. 2021 is nearly over and it's been one of Drive Tribe's best years, but we would not have achieved any of it without our amazing group of sponsors working with us. So I'd really appreciate it if you got behind our sponsor for today. They're back supporting the channel, it's Manscaped. The holiday season is here, so if you know someone in your friendship group or in your family that you think could do with a bit of a tidy up down below, fresh for a Christmas or New Year's party, I thoroughly recommend you get them the performance package from Manscaped. It's all genuinely nice quality stuff and the centerpiece is this, the Lawnmower 4.0, a waterproof cordless trimmer that comes with advanced skin safe technology to avoid any nicks and cuts in those sensitive areas. The 4.0 even has an LED light to make sure you're not blindly trimming and instead are tending to your crop with style and precision. Then we've got the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray, and of course the Weed Whacker with its 360 degree blades for nose and ear hair. And then there's my personal favourite and a set I use on the reg, the Shears 2.0 Luxury 6 Piece Stainless Steel Nail Kit. And if you enrol in their Peak Hygiene Plan, you can get ongoing replenishments of your favourite products delivered straight to your door, hassle free. So click the link in the description below and use the promo code DRIVETRIBE20 to get 20% off your package and free international shipping along with two free gifts. Your balls and your body will thank you. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Then there's the engine. The 300 brake horsepower wasn't created by some big gargling V8. It came from a tiny 1.5 litre inline four. 300 horsepower from a 1.5 back in the 50s was pretty crazy, so here's the how and why. The reasons that the engine was so small were twofold. MG wanted to use an engine that had production origins, so they took the 1.5 litre twin cam inline 4 from the MGA. The second reason was the record that MG was going for, the Class F land speed record, which is for cars that are between 1.1 and 1.5 litres. 
300 brake horsepower was created by a massive supercharger bolted to the side of the engine that pumped 32 pounds of boost into a set of twin SUs. The car was so aerodynamically efficient that they found during testing the car would sit at 100 miles an hour using just 29 brake horsepower. The 254 mile an hour record driver Phil Hill reported that when he lifted off the car barely slowed down due to how cleanly it cut through the air and due to only having one inboard brake at the rear. The wheels were also covered for aerodynamic reasons so Hill also reported that when he lifted off a vacuum was created by the high pressure in the wheel arches that sucked fuel vapour into the cockpit. He nearly died from suffocation during the first high speed run. Just to show you how effective the MG was at getting to 254 miles an hour, I've put together this graph which shows the ratio of the power needed to reach a car's top speed and comparing it to modern supercars that get to a similar top speed. There's the Veyron, which actually looks pretty efficient compared to the Chiron. The McLaren F1 does incredibly well as a road car, but then the MG comes in and completely obliterates all of these modern cars. And we can also compare it to a modern land speed record car, the Bloodhound SSC, which is aiming for a thousand miles an hour. That thing may as well not even be on that graph. What this graph shows is two things. The first one being that if you want to go faster, you need to drastically change your aerodynamic efficiency and the power output of your car, mostly down to that V squared aspect of the drag force equation. This can really clearly be seen in the Veyron versus Chiron. And then when you look at the amount of power that Bloodhound needs to get to a thousand miles an hour, it gets completely blown off the chart. The graph shows that it's also down to your overall package. The Koenigsegg Agera RS is quite a bit quicker than the Veyron, but due to its lightness and aerodynamic efficiency, it doesn't need much more power to get there, which means it gaps the Chiron in this graph quite nicely. The MG EX181 is so far detached from a road car that it's being a little mean to these supercars, but 254 miles an hour from a car that has the same power as a modern Golf GTI makes this MG truly remarkable. And if it needs to look like this to achieve it, well, why not? Before I go, I'd like to hand it over to you guys. If our sponsor from today, Manscaped, was to build their own production car, what would they call it? Tell me in the comments below. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.